In this video, watch a trader from our desk share how he prepares mentally for a huge trade. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. During COVID-19, unfortunately, all of us are trading remotely. I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. In this video, we're gonna share in step-by-step -step detail how to find the bottom in a stock or a sector. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at Carnival Cruise Lines, but pay special attention to how one of our firm traders prepares mentally to make a huge trade. Today I'm going to talk about how to buy a bottom in the cruise liners and this is a trade that I made in CCL. So just a bigger picture of the market, um, the trade was made on April 6th and that's this highlighted daily candle here. Uh, the morning of the trade, the S&P looked to be starting the week strong, this was a Monday. Uh, I was trying to recover from the previous week's declines which was uh, due to poor jobs data. Um, as COVID infection rates and reported deaths eased in some key locations while the Trump administration issued a more optimistic tone over the weekend. Uh, also helping pace these gains, economic relief checks are expected to go out over the next two weeks. And in the oil sector, OPEC Plus will be meeting, offering some optimism about a possible settlement in the oil price war. So we were gapping up on the Monday of the trade. So bigger picture, CCL, this is the daily chart. Um, CCL was down 85% from the start of the outbreak. From the start of the outbreak to the time of this trade, uh, before finding support at eight and double, triple bottom. These cruise liners were significantly underperforming the market even as we entered a bear, enter bear market territory. Cruise ships have been called virtual petri dishes for contagious disease due to their high, tightly packed spaces. Uh, the industry is facing a PR nightmare as infected ships present some of the worst infection densities outside of Wuhan. And then here's just a monthly chart of CCL so you kind of get an idea of how bad the sell-off in the stock actually is. So this is an hourly chart, so we're zooming in now. So on March 18th, CCL found a bottom at $8 before bouncing 143% in 1950 in just six days. And on April 6th, Carnival announced it registered a public offering of 71.8 million shares at a price of $8 per share. Following this announcement, CCL holds eight for two sessions and it's clear that $8 is a strong support and fair value for the stock at this time. So just to talk about my trade preparation, uh, when executing a trade that can make your month or year, it's important to prepare. I like to look over similar trades where I made the most and see what they all had in common. I'll also look at where I could have done better to ensure I execute on those things for the specific trade that's coming up. Uh, visualization is also a popular technique among traders at our firm. So some things I do, I visualize myself executing a trade with size. So I'll actually close my eyes and just, um, just see myself doing it. See my, feel myself hitting the buttons and just visualizing what that looks like. Um, I'll visualize the P and L swings that could occur and how those might have an impact on my emotions. So and I'll close my eyes and I'll try to get a feel for that and try to see what that would look like. And I'll also visualize the best and worst, worst case scenarios. So um, if that plays out, I kind of know what that looks like and I know how that will feel. So yeah, rehearsing the trade over in your head and doing these things ensures that there are kind of no surprises or you know, even if in real time you're you're surprised by what's going on, you'll you'll kind of have almost felt it already. I feel like if you don't do this, that you might not make as much money when you see a trigger for the trade. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, this is something that I do all the time and, you know, I feel like if you don't do this, you're going to act on your emotions and you're, you're going to hit out and hit back in, especially if you're trying to execute the trade with large size. Um, and you know, all the biggest trades that I've made, I have visualized them in my head. Wow. So all the biggest trades you've made so far, you've gone through this process. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like a breaking news trade and you kind of just have to act automatically. Any, any big trade that I plan out, um, I've done this. So the goal is to trade the setup autonomously as if you made the trade thousands of times. If you want to learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That's going to open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So this is when I initiated the long. So the offering, sorry about that. The offerings announced at $8. You can see these highlighted areas here. We hold eight to the tick. We hold eight to the tick. But at the end of the day, towards the end of the session here, we get below eight on volume and it does not move or break down from the price. It even gets below again, but it can't move lower. And if this was, you know, it is an important level, but sellers just couldn't get the job done. And particularly at the end of the session, um, volume increases and liquidity increases similar to the open. And, you know, if someone really wanted to sell there, they just, they just couldn't get it done. And, and that means a lot. This is true for lots of different types of setups as well. So if something is experiencing lots of volume, it's trending to the downside, volume comes in, they're selling, 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 the selling's enhanced, it's elevated, and we can't make newer lows that's a that's a pretty big sign you know that is the the market being able to absorb the the selling at that price and whether this is ccl whether this is a cruise line that's off 85 percent you know if you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself i think something is oversold or i wonder if something has pulled in too far when you get that high volume selling and we're trying to push to a lower low and we can't, we call that value buying. But really that's just a, a, can be a big signal for a potential reversal. And so we're gonna talk about this in CCL, but this is an example of maybe you developed a thesis to say, I think this is oversold, but then you're spotting, you're spotting, you're seeing, we say you're seeing it, you're seeing that there's a pattern now based on the price action that you can trade off of, which is, you know, let me buy this, I'll hit it up below the lows and let me give it a go to the upside for whether that's a reversal trade or whether that's, you know, just a quick scalp to the upside, but you're seeing it now, right? Price action, is, you're getting a setup and price action that you could trade off of other than just your thesis. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the offering was announced at $8 and we saw the stock bounce, you know, just a week back from this trade, 143% from this level. It's an important level and it's back at this level and there's a catalyst at this level. Um, and we see CCL hold $8 after hours into the next day's pre-market. And on Friday, which was April 3rd, CCL holds eight again um, into the close. Volume comes in. It breaks above VWAP, which is where I bought it at $8.20. Um, and it closes at the top of this two-day range here. 
So intraday fundamentals for the trade, average volume, 95.8 million shares. Harval, 47 and a half. So just a ton of volume being done on this day. ATR, $2.76. Short interest, 9.17%. Institutional ownership, 79.8%. Float, 436 million shares. And on Monday, April 6th, a headline hit that Saudi Arabia's investment fund became the third largest stakeholder in Carnival Corp. Uh, the government controlled investment fund became the third largest stakeholder. I'm curious, what did you think about the Saudi stake in the company? Did you view that as a positive? Did you view that as not a big deal? Uh, I think that's a very big deal because now we have the $8 offering price and we have the Saudis coming in and they're announcing they're the third largest stakeholder at these prices. So you got a big buyer coming in, you like that. You got exactly. a buyer coming in that has a lot of money and you like that. Yes. So that was announced at 9.05 a.m. and you can kind of see the spike in volume over $9. And you want to add to the position. So on the open, you see the massive volume to the upside uh, showing demand over $9. And then you just see a buyer support 915 for over 20 minutes off the open. So while the opening range is being set up, there's a buyer constantly buying at 915 for over 20 minutes. And, and this is a two minute chart to kind of just compress things. And you wanna to add to your position when you see that buyer just buying nonstop at 915, just holding that bid. So after this, Carnival breaks the opening range and trades into 10. Um, it fails to get above 10, so you wanna sell the ads and you wanna continue to hold your core from $8.20. What'd you think about maybe potentially buying more when it gets above the opening range? Yeah, and you could do that because you see here at like 920, uh, I'm sorry, like 945, some volume comes in over that. But you can kind of see that it kind of trades right back down here, but it does hold VWAP, which is a great sign. And even if you do add um, and it doesn't break up right away and it holds VWAP, you just know that your risk is to below 915 because it's such a strong level. So when it fails from 10, you just want to sell that and you want to hold the core. So you have a core from 820, you want to sell the ads from 920, 920-ish, 925, 930. And you can kind of see that it just holds VWAP to the tick here. And you can re-add your shares. Uh, $10 breaks around 11 o'clock and it holds. So you want to add there, and now you have your ads from VWAP with a stop at 915. And once it holds 10, you could raise your stop to the bottom of the tick into VWAP. And then as the trade continues, CCL fa fails to test 11. Um, the stock is now up 37.5% from our $8 support and you wanna sell the day trade and we can choose to sell the core position from $8.20 or sell half and swing the remainder. And I think it's also important to note that you could have also played this with options. So on the Friday, April 9th, $9 calls were trading for around 45 cents when CCL broke over VWAP over 820 on volume. So they were cheap. And then just to review the trade, when looking for a bottom in an oversold stock, we don't blindly just buy at arbitrary prices because we think the stock is down too much. That's a good point. That's, so when you're sitting in front of screens, you're going to develop lots of theses and that's fine to develop a thesis for a particular play, but you can't just trade off a thesis. And the reason why you just can't trade off a thesis is that there are people out there that do that for a living who have a lot more information than you do. 
they're a lot better at deciphering that information than you do. They, and, and I can't stress this enough, they have access to information that you just don't have and that you wouldn't have unless you had an enormous infrastructure to gather that information. That's just not the game that we play. And so, look, you'll be, you'll be sitting in front of screens and you'll be like, wow, these cruise lines have really sold off. You know, or wow, these airlines have really sold off. You know, or wow, you know, Disney is, it's not that bad at Disney or it's not that bad at JP Morgan. Um, and that's fine. You know, it's not that bad at Boeing and that, that's fine. But to be a professional active trader, that is insufficient to be a sustaining, active professional trader, that's not sufficient. To be a big, putting big money at risk, active professional trader, that's not what we do. I don't see any really great, sustaining, active, professional, big time traders with, there are a couple exceptions, but a large majority of them, unless, they're, they're, they're putting a bunch of variables together and they're seeing the term. You wanna be thinking about that. You don't wanna be building a career uh, off of information that's you know, off of things that are not gonna to lend to you making a lot of money. You, you don't wanna be doing things that aren't being done by a majority of the active elite traders who really do well. One of the huge advantages of being in a prop firm is you get to see why people do well I will leak to you guys why people do well uh, inside and outside of the firm. And, you know, from there, that helps you to sort of to, to, to see, oh, okay, lots of people make money in breaking news trades. So that's worthy of my study. Okay, lots of people are make a lot of money buying stocks that have been oversold, but they put variables together. They wait for the turn. That's how they do it. Okay, let me do it that way as opposed to me having an opinion about cruise lines and then getting really, really long. So that's a hugely important point for developing traders, which is don't just buy things down because you think they're oversold. Don't short things that you think are up too much just because you think it's up too much. You got to put other things together uh, for it. For instance, uh, you know, there are lots of people who thought Tesla was up too much when it was getting near 400 bucks. I think you remember that not too long ago. And then it went up, you know, to, it, it, it went up more than twice that. Um, that's, that's, that's just not the way to make professional trades. Continue, sir. Yeah, and just to go with that, this was one of those trades where the $8 price level had multiple catalysts to go along with it. And, um, the worst of the news to do with these cruise lines was, was over with. So yeah, we look for important prices that hold multiple times. Um, like I said, if the price has a catalyst or multiple catalysts behind it, that offers an even better risk reward for trying to pick the bottom. Um, multiple catalysts strengthen the support level and we know exactly where we're wrong in the trade. Um, when we have the wind at our back from the overall market, this helps immensely with our trade like we did on this day. And when a positive catalyst is the wire that could potentially cause the stock to rally, we need to add to the position, like the Saudis taking the stake. Uh, so this is a strong trade with a lot of moving parts that could be replicated in any publicly traded company. And um, CCL continued to trade higher off $8 and I believe it touched 1375 today, the last I checked. So it hasn't retested eight, um, it's continuing to trade higher. Okay, so now it's your turn. How do you prepare mentally to make a huge trade? Let us know by leaving me a comment below right now.